and uh, uh, I, I don't think the Republicans are going to come across. And um, the excuse will be, well, um, we don't want to be responsible for a loser. And they're right. Uh, it is going to be a loser. I expect the results of that stimulus package to last from three to nine months and in all probability three to six. So um, what do we get? Uh, uh, probably something on the order of uh, 90 to 180 days. And uh, it, it'll be history. If you're going to do a program like that, the only way to do it is to go where it's needed the most. Now, I know that that the uh, financial entities are bankrupt. They should be allowed to go under. But, of course, they own the Fed, so they're not, they're not going to allow that to happen. Uh, they don't care about the American people. They just care about their wealth and power. But the way to do it... Uh, if you're going to spend that kind of money, which is 12 or 13 trillion dollars, uh, let's take it and uh, let's find a way to give it to the American public, because heretofore, 72 percent of GDP has come from individual consumption. It's probably around 71 right now. The long-term mean is 64 and a half, and I think that's where we're headed. And so. If they really wanted to have a shot at, at getting any kind of equilibrium going, that would be the only way to do it. But even that, there's absolutely no guarantee that that would work, but I think they would be getting closer to the subject. Well, don't you think that they really should be buying up these bonds out there, these toxic bonds, and you know, hey, you know, buy them from banks throughout the world to protect the economy of the rest of the world, buy them up from, from our banks if they really wanted to do anything. But I think the people who issued those bonds ought to go to prison. I think the people who rated those bonds, AAA, ought to go to prison. I think the appraisers, uh, you know, who, you know, uh, certainly appraise these homes at prices that have no f relationship at all to their value, they should lose their licenses. And why isn't any of that happening? Well, it's a good question, and uh, it involves the whole, I call it the daisy chain. And you got the Fed, who told the raters to rate them. The raters were in collusion with the issuers, which were the banks of the CDOs and SIVs, which are collateralized debt obligations, and uh, uh, these other vehicles that they had with mortgages inside of bonds. And then you get the mortgage originator, who was qualifying people who were totally unqualified, and then you get the appraiser, who was told, look, this is what you do, and they did it. And then you have the salespeople, who knew the people shouldn't have been buying these kind of houses in the first place. And then you got 80% hold, hold, hold that of the people be... who bought houses who hold, lied in their application. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Well, this is Dr. Stan. I guess the course is Bob Chapman. He's just pointing out that everybody was responsible for creating this problem. The appraisers intentionally appraised the homes at far more than they were worth, and they made a lot of money out of it, and they didn't have the integrity. And they had to go to prison or certainly lose their appraisers' licenses. The people who sold these homes, you know, people who could not afford them, they had to lose their realtor licenses. The people who packaged the loans into, into bonds and then sold them, uh, I mean, they should go to prison as well. The people who gave these bonds a triple A rating, and then, of course, the banks, of course, have wrote the, in, the insurance policies. They call them derivatives, the insurance policies uh, on the bonds that, that of course, uh, were, they knew they were going to default on them. They ought to be allowed to go bankrupt. And the people who did it, the frauds and the people who did it ought to go to prison. And nobody's going to prison because this is just what they wanted. They wanted to bring down our economy and the economy of the world because that's how they hope to take us into the one world government. And if you doubt that... Yeah, all you need to do is go up on the Internet and pull down Henry Kissinger's article, January 12th, January 12th, International Herald Tribune, 
The Chance for a New World Order. That's the title, Chance for a New World Order. Henry Kissinger, International Herald Tribune. If you can't find it, if you get anything from us, we'll be glad to send you a copy. Understand, he lays it out, this horror that is destroying the lives of people, this is an opportunity. Well, let's go to Ian who's calling us from Florida. Hi, Ian. How are you hearing us? Are you hearing us on shortwave or Internet? Well, good evening. I'm, I'm listening to you on the Internet. All right, you go right ahead. Do you have a question or comment? Yes, yes. I've got, well, I've got a, an observation, a bit of a question. Um, the, uh, first, first of all, I, I in uh, Rhodesia and in South Africa, I remember hearing that they said, "Well, it can never happen here." Right. And my observation in the U.S. when I heard that same thing is, "Well, the bigger they are, the harder they fall." And at the moment, there's no real satisfaction in being proven right. But um, my biggest question for um, Bob tonight is um, the about manipulation of commodities. Like the cost of gas is, is going up at the pump, while it's you know still extremely uh, way down by the, the barrel. And other commodities, such as orange juice, for example, um, it's at the grocery store it's now three dollars a quart instead of two. But at the, as a producer, I'm getting like sixty cents instead of two two and a half dollars a pound. And how does that make sense? Well, nothing makes sense. It's all manipulated. Would you, well, the Ian's, of course, asking, what about manipulation of commodities, Bob? I mean, you know, is there manipulation of commodities? And I would simply ask, you know, uh, is, uh, it should be so obvious that there is. Go ahead. Bob? Bob, are you there? Well, I hope we haven't lost our, our guest, Bob. No, so, we got it. We got it. Okay, fine. I was getting a little worried there. Go ahead. The good question is, are the commodity markets manipulated? Without question. All right, fine. Does that Period. answer your question? You it shows know, the stock uh, market as well. we got a wholesale well. price of gasoline here that uh, moved up to 126 on Friday, uh, and uh, it was down 11 cents today to 116. But one of the um, large uh, manufacturers or Whatever you want to call them of gasoline, uh, has been, has been offline. And that's one of the reasons, uh, for the increase. But that doesn't le- let out the fact that, uh, uh, leave away the fact that, uh, there's a lot of manipulation going on. It's being done by the United States government. And you have to understand, Ian, that as far as gasoline is concerned, we have not built a new refinery in the United States in 30 years. It has been effectively blocked because they don't want competition. And the yeah. oil companies have done everything they could to promote the environmental movement, which, of course, is blocked competition. This is why they don't want nuclear energy. They don't want competition. And they lie to the American people about all sorts of things. Anything else, yeah, Ian, uh, before we let you go? Well, no, I don't want to tie up the time, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just see yeah, it's very difficult to make a living these days with these manipulations going on. But it's going to be a lot harder before long. So, I mean, just yeah. grit your teeth and you'll look back on these days as the good old days. Well, I mean, I'm, well, I'm, that, already, that. I'm already producing orange juice at a, at a loss. It, right. it, it makes no economic sense for me to do this anymore. All right. I, I know it, it's tragic. Then, uh, but they want to destroy the infrastructure of our society. That is what they really want. And it's not only ours. It's everybody. Right. It's just that we in Western Europe are the prime cases. In fact, if you have never read the... uh, Bye-bye, and thank you so much for calling. And let's go to uh, Kent, who's calling us from West Virginia. And hi, Kent. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Kent. Hi, Bob. I heard something uh, much long ago, and I forget from which channel, that they said that 20% of the uh, British economy was what they called financial products. I don't know whether Bob knows anything about that. And that makes me think that, you know, all these financial products are going to be worthless and Britain is going to take a, a, a tremendous, tremendous fall. Well, that's an interesting thing. Of course, the city, the city is part of London. It has a separate government, a separate police force. It's above the law. It's where the financial centers of the world are there in New York City. We'll be back in just a moment and Bob will tell you the answer. Bob, uh, how it, oh, just, oh, it's just a moment here. We've got to go to... Well, this is Dr. Stan. Go ahead there, Bob. What was your thought? Uh, the figure that the gentleman quoted, 20%, is correct. And um, the city of London is in serious trouble. And so is the British economy. 
and uh, we cover Europe and England extensively in the International Forecaster, uh, the whole world, but uh, they in particular because uh, of the commonality of uh, a background and interests and uh, way of doing business. But, um, I, you know, if you're watching the pound, uh, it's come down uh, from uh, essentially 202. It's now 142. 